we came back to the United States, and I had two young children. And so I naively put them in the public school system because I didn't know how horrible it was. I had no idea what what was going on in this country, what had happened in the 18 years that I'd been abroad. And um, all of a sudden, I you know I asked these the principal over at the elementary school if I could see the new social studies textbooks for elementary school. And he he gave me the teacher's manual, which is the biggest mistake he ever made. But anyway, in this particular issue, it's terribly important because this went out to all the guidance counselors across the country. It said, quote, we in the, in the death education movement will use death education to change the students' attitudes and values and beliefs about death and dying the same way we used sex education to change their attitudes towards sex and various sexual practices. The superintendent called me the next day and he said, Charlotte, this is the change agent superintendent out of Harvard, uh, would you mind if we um, put in a program in decision making? And I said, oh, I wish I could look in your beautiful blue eyes because you know that's exactly the same thing. Hello and welcome to Sovereign Solutions, where we expose the financial elite who are building a new world order to enslave us all, and where we talk about solutions. What can we as individuals do to reclaim our sovereignty? And what can we as a people do to reclaim our republic so that we may establish peace, prosperity, liberty, and justice for all as our founding fathers intended? As you may know by now, last summer, the summer of 2006, I made a huge loop around the country by car, almost 10,000 miles. The farthest extreme to which I traveled was Bath, Maine, to the home of Charlotte Thompson Iserby. Charlotte Iserby is the consummate whistleblower. Iserby served as senior policy advisor in the Office of Educational Research and Improvement, U.S. Department of Education during the first Reagan administration, where she first blew the whistle on a major technology initiative which would control curricula in America's classrooms. Iserby is a former school board director in Camden, Maine, and was co-founder and research analyst of Guardians of Education for Maine from 1978 to 2000. She also served in the American Red Cross on Guam and Japan during the Korean War, and in the United States Foreign Service in Belgium and in the Republic of South Africa. Iserby is a speaker and writer best known for her 1985 booklet, Back to Basics Reform, or OBE, Skinnerian International Curriculum, and her 1989 pamphlet, Soviets in the Classroom, America's Latest Education Fad, which covered the details of the U.S. Soviet and Carnegie Soviet education agreements, which remain in effect to this day. She is a freelance writer and has had articles published in Human Events, The Washington Times, The Bangor Daily News, and included in the record of congressional hearings. Folks, since the beginning of Sovereign Solutions, I have probably mentioned Charlotte Iserby's book, The Deliberate Dumbing Down of America, more times than any other book. And... I highly recommend it. It is a fascinating history of education and it proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that the real purpose of education at the highest levels of power is not what we think it is. It's not to teach children reading, writing, and arithmetic. It is to destroy our heritage and destroy our culture and deliberately dumb us down turning us into good corporate slaves 
folks, when it comes to exposing the power elite and what they're really up to, what their objectives really are, there is no better interview that I've done to that end. So you're not going to want to miss the next hour of Charlotte Thompson Iserby. Well, Charlotte, thank you so much for having me as a guest in your home and for being here with Sovereign Solutions. Now, to begin with, why don't you tell us about how you discovered what you've discovered? That's a very good place to start because uh, I guess everybody has to start there. You know, why do so many of us uh, spend our our lives once we find out? what's really going on in the world. We spend our, our whole life trying to help other people understand so that future generations will live in freedom and prosperity and and uh, be allowed to think, speak, act according to their own conscience. Right? Uh, my my journey started probably uh, I, I was a foreign service girl I, I spent 18 years abroad first of all working for the American Red Cross in Korea uh, not in Korea during the Korean War I was meant to go to Korea but I didn't I was stationed on the island of Guam and in Japan and uh, then I came back on a freighter French freighter third class that was fascinating I all the misconceptions I had about Joseph McCarthy being uh, a rabble rouser, etc., when he discussed communist infiltration in our government, uh, were uh, dissolved, diluted, went down the tubes when I sat next to uh, people from North Vietnam and China who had just gotten out of the communist countries. And I listened to them. I speak French, so they spoke French. I was able to understand uh, what was going on in communist countries and that actually there was something that we should be worried about, very, very worried about. And uh, that was my first little bit of awakening. And then I, I came back to the United States and I was back for about six months and I joined the Foreign Service. I went into the United States Department of State and I worked, uh, I was an administrative assistant to ambassadors abroad the first one was in South Africa, and the second one was uh, Douglas MacArthur. The second, the the uh, general's nephew in Brussels, and that's where I met my husband in Brussels. And uh, I remember very definitely there were certain you know signs along the way that I I noticed, and I thought, what's going on here with American foreign policy? Such as the United Nations in Katanga, in the Belgian Congo. I was right there seeing all the cables coming in from Elizabethville, uh, coming in from the Congo, Katanga, what the UN forces were doing, raping nuns. Uh, horrible, horrible. And Katanga, I mean, nobody likes to talk about it anymore because they got deep into that one. They know how absolutely evil, satanic, rotten the United Nations is. As a matter of fact, I recently showed a documentary on Sovereign Solutions about Katanga. Good. The one, the one that is uh, issued by Reality Zone. Ed oh, yeah, Ed, Ed Griffin. Griffin. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so that was uh, quite a wake-up call for me. I was sitting in the office in Brussels. Of course, the Belgians were... Uh, my landlady was uh, terribly upset with America. Oh, who wouldn't be? The Belgians were very upset with U.S. foreign policy. Uh, my own boss, General uh, Ambassador MacArthur, I think he was very upset with it too, but he had to carry out what the president wanted. And uh, he had to carry out the president's uh, foreign policy. And uh, anyway, then I got married. We came back to the United States. Came back, I, ca I left Belgium, came back to the United States. My husband came over. We got married. Then we went interestingly enough, back to Belgium for four or five years, which is a lovely period in my life. 